cornmeal really is quite confusing, and today I hope to demystify it a little bit for you guys. In front of me here, I have a few different types of cornmeal. Fine cornmeal is used in a lot of batters. It's used in coatings. It's not typically used for polenta, unless you're trying to make something like an instant polenta, a very quick polenta. And these two versions I have in front of me here are both examples of fine polenta, but with one major difference, how they're ground. This version I have here is called stone ground polenta. It's ground using a big stone. And so what happens there is that you get a different kind of gradient of textures. You get some bigger pieces, but then you also get some fine powdery pieces. So it's not as consistent as if you just had a regular, more commercial type of fine polenta, which I have here. So you can see it's very consistent. It's not as powdery. Moving away from the fine, we get into the more coarse grinds of polenta or cornmeal. This version I have here, this is white cornmeal, also known as um, grits. This is typically used in like a morning porridge in the South. And then I have here a stone ground coarse cornmeal. And you can see again, there's that irregularity, that fine, powdery substance and also some really big flecks of cornmeal. Now, in addition to that, I have a more consistent commercial cornmeal here, and this is also coarse. Now, when you're shopping for cornmeal, read your recipe thoroughly. Make sure you're buying whatever is specified in your recipe because the cooking times and the ratios of water and all of that stuff will be different. So today I'm using one cup of the coarse cornmeal and I have five cups of water here. I'm up to a boil here. I'm gonna take a whisk and gradually add in your cornmeal. If you dumped it in all at once, you might end up with some big clumps of cornmeal. So do this gradually and gently. So you're gonna cook this cornmeal for a long period of time. So it's gonna take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes depending on the coarseness of your cornmeal. So get ready to stand at the stove for a little bit of time because you really do need to kind of whisk this constantly. And it's really important to try the polenta as you're cooking it to really know when it's done. It's really like pasta in that way where you don't know how long it's actually going to take. You have to cook it by taste. This brand will probably take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. So it's been about 30 minutes here. As you can see, the water has really absorbed into the granules of the cornmeal and it's bubbling in the center. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Now the only way we'll be able to know if this is done is to actually try it. So give it a little taste. It's good, it's nice. It still has a slight tooth to it and that means like a, a little bit of chewiness to it but that's the consistency that I'm looking for. If you wanted something that was a little bit more smooth, you could certainly continue to cook this, even add a little bit more water so that it doesn't thicken up or dry out too much. So now I've turned off the heat and I'm going to add a few final ingredients, a tablespoon of butter here. This is unsalted butter. And really what this does is it's gonna create a nice shininess to your polenta and it will also make it that much richer. I have two tablespoons of heavy cream and a quarter of a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Today, I'm just going to serve this polenta just as it is. This would be fantastic with a wonderful um, sauce over top. With some braised meat, it would be delicious as well. Now, if you're serving your polenta just as is, you wanna make sure that you have a nice warm bowl. Otherwise, if it's cold, your polenta is gonna seize up on you and it won't keep its wonderful texture. Give a few ladles here, right into your bowl. Top it off with a little bit more cheese. Some pepper is always really nice. And maybe a sprinkling of salt. And there you go, guys. Polenta, it's not that scary. You just need to know all of the different types of cornmeal and how you should shop for it in the store. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums that you need solved, whether they're baking, whether they're cooking, whatever you have, throw them our way right in the comment section below. And as always, use that hashtag, guys. Hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. Enjoy.